Alright, thanks for watching and today we want to do something really cool and maybe the title intrigued you because the question is, is differentiation linearly independent? And by the way, that doesn't really mean anything because differentiation is an operator. How can an operator be linearly independent? But what I do want to show is the following. So let V, BW, be the space of just smooth functions on R. So the space of infinitely differentiable functions, which are basically the functions you learn in calculus, like e to the x, or x squared, or sine of x, but not stuff like absolute value of x, because you can't really differentiate that, at least at zero. And consider the following linear transformation, d, from c from v to w, And just defined by df is just f prime. So it just takes a function as its input and spits out its derivative. For example, d of x squared should be 2x. And that makes sense. This is infinitely differentiable, and this is also infinitely differentiable. So it's good. And moreover, once you have d, you can like uh, compose them. So you can define dd, or a p dd. Um, or what's called d squared, so d squared f, it's d of df, and that's d of f prime, and that's really f prime prime. So if you want d squared of x squared, you differentiate this twice and you get two. And what do I want to show? I want to show that d, d squared, and d cubed are linearly independent. So in that sense, differentiation is linearly independent. So, d, d squared, d cubed, is linearly independent. And by the way, this works for any power, so you can go up to d to the n or something. What's more interesting is what happens in the infinite case. Probably also true, but not 100% sure. No, actually it is true because uh, remember for linear independence you take finite linear combo, so that also works. All right, how do you show this? So suppose, let's say a d plus b d squared plus c d cubed equals to what? So usually you say the zero vector, but in this case you always have to ask yourself what is the zero vector? Here it's the zero transformation that I like to call t0. And what t0 does, it takes a function and just spits out the zero function. Now, you have to understand. Oh, so also what we have to show is that a equals to b equals to c equals zero. What you have to understand, this is an equality of, of like linear transformations. In particular, for every input, f, it always gives you the same output. So what this tells you is that a, d, plus b, d squared, plus c, d cubed of f, equals to t0 of f, which is 0. And so this works for any function, so any smooth function, and in particular, it works for those infinite functions that we have in hand. But all we need to show is that those three constants are zero. So it turns out all you need to do is pick some clever functions that allow you to conclude that those constants are zero. So just start with some easy functions. Well, if you have f is one, it doesn't really give you much info. It would tell you zero plus zero plus zero equals zero, but that's true no matter what a, b, and c are. Well, no problem, let's just continue. Let's take the function x. Then what we get, a, d plus b, d squared plus c, d cubed of x equals to the zero function, but that's a, d, x plus b, d squared x, plus c d cube x equals zero. Now, if you differentiate x once, you get one. So a times one, which is a, 
If you differentiate x twice, you get 0. If you differentiate x thrice, you get 0. So a plus 0 plus 0 is 0. So in fact, a equals 0. Which is great, because it means in this equality, uh, you don't have to worry about a anymore. All right? So this was so much fun. And as like the Teletubbies say, again, again. So let's just apply more complicated functions. Well, we had x. Let's try x squared. f of x equals to x quadrado. Then we get bd squared plus c d cubed of x squared equals to zero. All right, if you, so in other words, b d squared x squared plus c d cubed x squared equals zero. But look, d x squared, that's two x, d squared x squared, you differentiate that, you get two, d cubed x squared, you get zero. So what you're left with is 2b or not 2b plus c times 0, that's 0. So 2b is 0, so b is 0, which is great. We showed a is 0, we showed b is 0. Now let's just hope that c is 0. But the point is you're left with this. So cd squared, cd cubed of f equals 0. Well, let's just continue. Let's let f of x be x cubed. So f of x equals x cubed. And then what we get is cd cubed of x cubed. We know that 0. But let's see. So, um, dx cubed, that's 3x squared. d squared x cubed, you do that again, 6x. dqx cubed, that's 6. And so you get 6c equals 0, and that implies c equals 0. So what do we get? We assume some linear combo gives you the 0 function, with 0 operator, and we show that a is 0, b is 0, c is 0. So indeed, we can conclude legitimately that d, d squared dq is linearly independent. So in this sense, differentiation is linearly independent, which is really cool. Uh, all right, so I hope you like this little linear independence extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.